off to Pendleton or Walla Walla. Never seen this before. Send you to Portland. OHSU. It, it just went on and on and on. Not just me, but my sibling, uh, relatives, neighbors, uh, diseases and anomalous medical happenings that no one could explain. In 1986, the activist groups, bless their souls, working so hard to get those document, documents released, when the first 19,000 pages were read, it was shocking, but it was also the answer. I mean, we had been thoroughly contaminated through the air, through the water, and through the food chain, because all of that that didn't go in the river landed on the ground. And my family ate elk, deer, pheasant, duck, the wildlife that we shot at my father and boyfriend would go out hunting and fishing and bring home the food that had been irradiated. So uh, I found out I had been contaminated in 1990. I was living at the Oregon coast. I had been sick for nine months with no diagnosis. At one point, I lost 50 pounds in 30 days and had been consulted with Mayo Clinic, UCLA Med School, Washington Infectious Disease Specialist, a veterinarian in Santa Barbara. <laughs> um, an unbelievable chase to find out what was wrong with me. I was finally in a hospital for a week in Corvallis, Oregon, and I have a seven-page discharge summary with no diagnosis, and I was really, really sick. And this has happened on and on and on. Um, Plutonium targets the reproductive organs. I was not able to have children. I have one sister. She had three miscarriages. So my family ended, basically ended. My parents never got to see grandchildren born, uh, enjoy the uh, family life of having a, a, a family that would be extended. Um, it's been a really, really incredible experience. And in the 90s, after the documents were released, a lot of downwinders, activists, got together. And we came to Oregon PSR and said, could someone here help us? We need to take a letter or have something to take to our physicians that's, that will give us some credence, because no one is believing what we're saying about our personal health. And to Oregon PSR's credit, they formed a, a, a group of interested people, as Chuck mentioned, and we created the Northwest Radiation Health Alliance and took a survey of 1,800 downwinders. Yes, it was a self-selected survey. No, we didn't have a control. We got 800 replies on those surveys, which is a phenomenal number, if any of you know about sending out surveys. And um, the list of diseases that came forth was this long, there's diseases after diseases, and some of these are hundreds of people. And then the uh, this this list is just thyroid disorders. And when you get a population that the thyroid cancers are almost equal to the breast cancers, something is wrong with this picture. Usually in a regular population, it's about eight to one, eight breast cancers to one thyroid cancer. So through the Northwest Radiation Health Alliance and the generous donation of time and effort from Rudy and Lorraine Nussbaum and Charlotte Grossman and a number of activists who worked these surveys and put them in a database and created the survey results, we were able to publish in peer-reviewed scientific journals seven different articles that validated the fact that there is a population in southeastern Washington that has been harmed by the radiation exposures from Hanford. And that was a very validating experience for those of us, the activists, that were damaged because the scientific community, of course, always says, oh, everything you're telling us is anecdotal. Particularly the government says, everything is anecdotal. We have no proof that radiation really hurts anyone. So the, the Alliance was a wonderful effort, and uh, we had a conference when we got all the survey results in, in Pendleton, and had uh, a wonderful gathering of people and physicians and 
scientists came and we had presentations and panel discussions and released the, the findings of our survey. And um, it was a, a, a piece of doing activism that was very rewarding, even though it was very um, bittersweet. So I'm here to say that there have been hundreds of thousands of us from this exposure at Hanford because with the prevailing winds, the way they go six months of the year and the other six months of the year, and being held in by the Cascade Mountain Range and the Bitterroot Mountain Range in Idaho was just created a bowl that just held all the emissions right in that area. So it's a huge geographic area. Lots of people were damaged. We, meaning the downwinders, say we were put on the front lines of the Cold War without our permission or without our knowledge. We are the living cell evidence of America's nuclear holocaust.